Welcome to Panel Data Analysis. This video begins a series of uh, issues in panel data. In this video, I will talk about the introduction to panel data. In particular, we'll talk about different data types, the types of different panel data, and the benefits of using panel data over cross-sectional. So we have basically three types of data, as we all know. Uh, we have the cross-sectional. This is where we observe uh, individuals or households or any kind of unit we want to study at a particular point in time. Say we observe uh, a company uh, or companies in 2019 alone. So this is cross-sectional uh, data. We also have time series data. This is often at the macro level where we want to look into the effect of one macro indicator, for example, inflation over time. Panel data is simply um, the pooling of observations on the cross-sectional or households, firms, countries over several time periods. So it shares elements of cross-sectional and those of uh, time series data. Here is an example of panel data structure. Here we, we study um, four people uh, concerning their gender, their age, education, and income. And what we do is to collect the data for each individual for three consecutive years. So we take bulk, we collect all the information we needed in 2001, we go to Sarah and collect the same in 2001 and we repeat for each of the year the same unit. So we don't change the people we are going to, we collect the data from. So that is panel data. If we change the unit, for example, we include uh, we change, we don't, we no longer go to uh, Nicole and probably different people, people, then that, 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 that doesn't constitute panel data. Types of panel data. Basically, we have macro panels. This is where we deal with um, large number of uh, units and then small within small uh, time dimension. So we often say uh, fixed T. And so we can have uh, hundreds or thousands of um, units to observe over say a minimum of say two years to maybe maximum of 10 years or even 20 years. But it doesn't uh, often exceed these thresholds. Then we also have the macro panels. Uh, here we study um, at the country level, for example, and then we study um, maybe some small countries over a large period of time. Then we have uh, balance panels. So any the, the, the previous two, macro or macro, any of them can be balanced or unbalanced. So balance, we don't have missing observation. For unbalanced panel, we have some gaps. Then we have unequally spaced uh, panels. So here we don't follow all the years. We only have uh, observation for some years depending on the variable that we are interested in or the main variable of interest. So say we sell a house in 2005, um, so we have information for the price of the house. And then again, in 2007, we sell a house. So if we don't have houses to sell every year, probably we'll have this data kept some other years. Then we have pseudo panels. This is where we observe groups. So typically categorical variables, uh, or indicators over uh, a long period of time. So for example, we study females versus uh, males over a long period of time. So that is see the panels. Then we have nested panels. And nested panels is also called 
hierarchical um, data panels. Let's have a, a look at the structure of hierarchical panels. Um, here, say we have four companies or four firms to study, and these two of them are located in country one, and uh, two of them, firm three and four, are located in country two. And these country one and two are located in the uh, region, say South Asia. So we could have more of these countries and more of these regions. So how do we incorporate these um, structures into our models? So panel data allows us to incorporate these uh, structures into our models. Now we look into the benefits of using panel data over cross-sectional. If we, you use panel data, we are able to control for individual heterogeneity. It simply means the differences across um, the individual. So, for example, differences across uh, Bob, uh, Sarah, Nicole, and all, that, and, uh, and Peter. And then we, we are also able to analyze a change over time. For example, if we introduce a policy, we are able to know the impact of a, of a policy after the year it was introduced. And panel data give us more information because we have the information for, let's say, if, if one company we have information for years before and current years. Then also we have less correlated problem because we have more information and the information is not coming from only one individual or one company. So because of that, correlated problem is less severe uh, in panel data. data. So, and then we also have more degree of freedom, again, because we have more information, um, the degree of freedom is higher compared to uh, pure cross-sectional. Then more efficiency in the sense that um, we are using more information to predict um, the companies we are studying um, or a model than if we were to observe uh, the company for one particular point in time. So we have more information within and across the companies. Then panel data also allow you to study the dynamics of adjustment. So for example, you want to do dynamic panel data modeling is possible. You want to look at what happens last year could affect this year. So we will now look into the different models in the panel data.